Dear friends, Merry Christmas 2019 from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. In the last chapter of the book of the Revelation, verse 11, we read, He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. It is not unlikely, according to Father Athanasios Mytilineos, who interprets this verse in his 99th lesson in his work on the book of the Revelation, it is not unlikely, he says, for some to consider this verse strange in its expression. But rest assured that this is not an exhortation for people to become more unjust and filthy. St. Andrew interprets, he did not say those words as an exhortation to injustice and filthiness, God forbid, but by respecting each person's free will, it is a saying, let each one do what he wishes. I do not violate anyone's disposition or freedom. To help us with this verse, we will refer to a similar verse by prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, He who hears, let him hear, and he who disobeys, let him disobey. This verse of Ezekiel is very analogous to the adage used as a refrain by Christ, He who has ears, let him hear. Prophet Daniel provides us with an interesting verse along these lines about the end times. And I quote, Many will be chosen out and thoroughly whitened and tried with fire and sanctified. But the transgressors shall transgress, and none of the transgressors shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Daniel 12.10 from the Septuagint. For those of you who may have seen uh, brick ovens burn, when you burn wood in a brick oven, the bricks are initially black. When the oven is heated to maximum temperatures, then the same bricks turn white. Likewise, the righteous will excel. They will be whitened by trials. They will be purified as fire purges things in a furnace. The transgressors, however, will deviate in greater and worse lawlessness or transgressions. What the prophet wants to say here is that the unrighteous and impious people will not understand anything from the prophetic word. The pious and wise people will understand very well. In this verse, St. John the Evangelist singles out two pairs of people. First pair the unrighteous and the righteous. Second pair, the filthy and the holy. The unrighteous in a broad sense is the devious, impious people who sin at will, and the righteous are those who live, who try to live a pious life. Righteousness or dikeosini in the language of the scripture means holiness, and adherence to the statutes of faith, while unrighteousness refers to a life of transgression and disobedience. He who is filthy, in juxtaposition to he who is holy, refers to mainly carnal sins. He who is holy abstains from sinful acts and lives a life of holiness. The point of this entire verse is that the people of this earth are divided into two camps. The one camp strives to progressively live a life of piety and sanctity. The other camp transgresses and becomes more vile progressively to the point where the chasm between these two camps widens more and more. This is the meaning of the word still or eti in Greek. The first camp continues to strive towards a life of holiness, whereas the second camp pursues a life of licentiousness and filthy carnality. There are many things we could say on the last sentence of this verse. He who is holy, let him be holy still. In these last and perilous days, my friends, that we find ourselves in, I am afraid that there is no other way to preserve our holiness except to strive towards its increase. 
This is also in agreement with the economic principles, if you will. If you want to maintain your financial wealth, you must have some gain every year. If there's no gain financially, then your principal will begin to decrease with inflation, costs of living going up and up, and so on and so forth. This is the general meaning of this verse through which the Word of God wants to impress upon us that as people around us are constantly distancing themselves from God and apostasy becomes greater and greater, the faithful must strive to increase their closeness to God. It also means that there can be no relationship whatsoever between the people of the two camps, no dialogue between the men of piety and the unrepented men of carnality. There's no room for discussion in this case because such a discussion will harm and do injustice to the pious people. Having said this, we can talk with all those who want to learn more about our orthodox spirituality and lifestyle and wish to correct their ways, but never with those who insist that we should lower the bar and water down our faith. We need to be careful, my dear friends, all of you who love the Word of God. Let's not romance with the world of apostasy with people who practice impiety. Let's not try to fit in because we will begin to backslide. Now you may ask, now why does God allow this coexistence at least on a geographical plane? Yes, we can live in the world but not be of the world. We can simply coexist with the world. The Lord gave us the parable of the tares, the weeds, which grow along with the wheat. The workers of the field asked their master, should we go and tear out the tares? Their master told them, no. Strangely enough, he added, let them grow along with each other. Let the wheat increase along with the tares. This parable fully explains the words of this revelation verse. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. They, the wheat and the weed, occupy and grow in the same plot of land, in the same field of the world but they are easily detected. The wheat cannot turn into weed, and vice versa, at least in a biological sense. And the entire subject of this verse revolves around our own disposition and what we prefer in life. If we wish to remain in a life of sanctity, we will. And this presupposes our willingness and effort to increase. Let's not give in to this demonic notion often heard even from the pulpit that holiness has its boundaries and once we have achieved some of its parameters, we are accomplished and good and complete Christians. Nonsense. We are in need of continual and daily growth. We always must keep in mind the aforementioned verse of Daniel. All the transgressors will not understand, but the spiritually wise will understand. This means that the impious will be unsuspecting of the mystery of lawlessness and they will be clueless of the works of the Antichrist. If we try to speak to them to make them suspect some things, most of them will not understand or they'll sneer at us. The pious will understand. They are in tune with reality and they will be watchful because they are wise in Christ. We often speak about intelligence and sharpness of mind, but these terms are relative. Someone can be a business mastermind, but not so savvy in his social skills or spirituality. These specialties in certain areas are not necessarily a good thing. True intelligence or acuity is judged by the quality of a man's interests and choices. If I am a great businessman and I make a ton of money, I save it and keep on hoarding it and increasing it, how do I differ from the mindless rich fool of the parable who was told by Christ, by God, Aphron, Aphron, literally mindless, you mindless men, this night they seek your soul, the demons that is, the things that you collected and gathered, what will they become? If we only knew how many people fall in this trap, 
They struggle a lifetime, they sacrifice everything to amass money, and at some point they discover that their life is practically over. They didn't enjoy very much of their life in their preoccupation to be financially well in the future. What future? Now they're old and their children or relatives will quickly squander their hard-earned money since they didn't have to work for it, as St. John the Chrysostom says, and experiences pretty much tells us the same thing. True intelligence and acuity is to come to realize your best and highest interest, which is wholly spiritual and Christ-centered. They are the wise of Daniel, or noimones in Greek, who have the spiritual mindset, the spiritual nous, to understand and study the times who know what transpires around them, and they increase their holiness. I explain all this to keep us from being scandalized and frazzled, like many people around us who give up and take the wide path of destruction. Do not follow them, my friends. Let them be. Let us increase in our good works, and let them increase in their depravity. Let us finally understand what is our real and highest and best interest in this temporal life. Merry Christmas 2019, and we pray that we all have a spiritually profitable year of the Lord 2020.